Hey everybody, it is Natalie from Power Moon Tarot. Welcome to your reading. Today's reading is called Your Spiritual Gifts and we have three piles to choose from. Pile number one is the Silver Siren. If you're drawn to this card, you'll choose pile number one. For pile number two, we have the Tiger Angel, okay? For pile number two, and for pile number three, we have the Dark Harlequin for pile number three, okay? So take a deep breath, look at each card. What are you feeling? What's the energy? I haven't done a spiritual gifts reading for a while, so this is kind of fun. And we're coming up on Halloween, so everything is the spirit world right now. And um, interesting things are happening, my friends. So fast, I feel like I can barely keep up with it. Um, I will be posting an astrology update soon. Um, I've been dealing with some health issues on my end, and so I haven't been as active as I'd like to be on YouTube, but I am here. And I do miss you guys, and I do want to get some more content up, okay? And if you want to skip my intro on this video, I'm going to talk a tiny bit about the astrology right now. If you want to skip the intro and go straight to your pile, you're more than welcome to do that. And um, just find the in the description box below, there'll be timestamps to each pile. And you can watch more than one pile for sure, because there may be multiple messages for you. Um, just quickly on the current astrology. So, um, well, this is more like what's happening astronomically right now. There is a massive um, solar solar flares going on right now, and people are seeing the northern lights like really far south. And I think it's interesting because yesterday Pluto um, just went out of retrograde at 29 degrees Capricorn in that very critical anoretic degree. And um, the moon was passing over Pluto at the same time that Pluto was turning direct. So big shift as Pluto is about to move out of um, Capricorn and move into Aquarius in a few weeks for the next 20 years. Basically no more Pluto and Capricorn. So that is very interesting um, going on right now. And then, but I, what I think is really causing like these solar flares is, um, well, I mean, it's scientifically things are causing it, but also like astrologically, um, the sun in Libra is squaring Mars and Cancer right now. And if you think about the sun, um, you know, the sun, our actual sun squaring Mars, it's interesting because there's like eruptions of energy and there's eruptions of light and, um, the sun's like rays and the sun's energy is like coming at us really strong and um it's really intense which is very like mars like energy um but it's not necessarily like good for us in a lot of ways because our power grids are already stressed because of the hurricanes and the storms and even though the lights do look beautiful um, I just think it's an interesting energy that the sun is actually squaring Mars right now. And the the aspect is going to be going exact on October 14th. So anyway, I just wanted to mention that going on right now and interesting times that we are living in for sure. Let's go ahead and dive into the reading, okay? I'm going to put the other piles aside here. And um, we are going to start talking about pile number one. Okay, so let me go ahead and start with pile number one. Pile number one, welcome to your reading. You chose the Silver Siren and today's reading is called Your Spiritual Gifts. And we are going to be talking about the gifts that spirit is bestowing upon you and our spiritual gifts can change over time and evolve over time and new ones can pop up so we're constantly always moving and changing as people right so let's go ahead focus in on your energy today pile number one as i'm shuffling open your crown chakra 
Think about what feels comfortable for you, what feels nice for you, or areas that you are growing right now. Pile number one, areas that you are growing or want to grow. And we'll do the tarot in a little bit, but first I'm going to start with the Oracle cards, okay? Temperance on the bottom of the deck. And let's go ahead and get into it. Loon, intuitive. Listen to the song in your soul. Trust your intuition as you have a way of knowing. Emerge from the busy life and seek more solitude. Recognize that you are unique and that you are loved. The loon. We have take the lead with the three of wands. Ooh, I like that. We have moving on with the eight of cups. And that's that solitude that the loon card was talking about. Um, taking the lead in your own life, but also having enough time for solitude. We have number 38 here for those of you that are around that age, or you're thinking about things that were happening around that age, or you're wondering where will I be at that age? Okay, we've got cleanse here. Cleanse. Ooh, I love that. The gift of cleansing. Cleansing. We have death. Cleansing after death. Okay, and death can seem kind of scary, um, but I also feel like with that cleanse energy, it's like the energy of rebirth, okay? It's the energy of letting go. It's the energy of moving on. Very beautiful. We have inner alchemy. Inner alchemy is achieved when you react to fear with love. Yeah, and death can bring, you know, the death of things in our, whatever, it's a death of a person or it's a death of a situation um, can bring a lot of fear, you know, and you stepping up and taking the lead in situations where uh, that are very heavy, that are very like intense um, situations that require a lot of like emotional sensitivity, a lot of intuitiveness for understanding where people are at, um, inner alchemy. Inner alchemy is achieved when you react to fear with love. Okay. And the ability to change, cleanse the situation, move it forward in a better direction. Inner alchemy is achieved. All right. And working with that inner alchemy is something that you highly, highly understand, pile number one, and that you are um, very good at. And perhaps some of you here are like really good in a crisis. You know intuitively what needs to be done. You're able to step up and take the lead, take the reins. And, you know, it's expending a lot of energy. So maybe there are times that you need quiet, you need peace, you need to be alone, or you've just, um, you know, dealing with some intense energy from others, from the situations that you're in, and other times you're just like, okay, I need peace and quiet. I need to be left alone, okay? And um, I am seeing something about moth, or like mothballs or moths. I'm also seeing something about like coffee beans here, which is interesting. I don't know how those two would relate to one another. Um, but spiritual detox, I feel, is a very high on your list of things that you are very good at, pile number one. We have here Midheaven and Pinnacle. Ooh, helping people reach their highest, their, helping people reach their goals, helping people find their, um, find their gifts, I feel, pile number one. Okay, and this is card 36, and um, I mentioned the number 38 before. So there could be something special about the years 36 to 38 in your particular life, coming up in your life that Spirit really wants to talk to you about or is wanting to draw your attention to something that came up in between those years, okay? Um, the midheaven in astrology is, is our career, it's our purpose, it's uh, where we really shine the brightest, okay? Really reach for our potential, um, where we become known for something that we're really, really good at. 
Okay, and we have here the Halls of Learning, Spirit Guides, Confirmation, and Great Lessons. I'm going to read this card actually a little bit um, because this is where um, you are spending a lot of time spiritually right now, these Halls of Learning. And let me find... Do, do, do. Okay, the Halls of Learning, also sometimes known as the Great Halls, are an etheric retreat dedicated to spiritual knowledge. They are a training space for all souls, including those on earth, guides, and those between lives. They have been visited by many spiritual seekers, seers, and mediums over the years and have been described as a giant, somewhat gothic university building with marble flooring and spiral staircases and tall bookcases. Some have said these halls are the home of the Akashic Records, okay? While others have wondered if they are connected to the halls of Amenti. I can confirm these are actually two different retreats. Ultimately, this etheric retreat is an ancient mystery school and is particularly powerful. I'm getting chills right now. For those who are opening up their psychic and clairvoyant abilities, we have this with this intuitive um, message here with this loon, with the loon and it says intuitive. So this is interesting pile number one. Okay. Um, if this gateway comes to you often, it brings confirmation that your psychic gifts are strengthening. Ooh, I love that. And with the death card with death here, um, you know, mediumship, that type of stuff pile number one. Okay. Definitely something that you could tap into as far as your spiritual gifts. Also, if the idea of ancient mystery school in the astral realm seems familiar, there's a good chance you've been here during dream time or even between incarnations. Incarnations. These great halls are held within the heart of source and a projection of the divine minds in infinite intelligence. When we visit them, we are connecting directly with the wisdom of source, okay? Source and the wisdom keeper, keepers of the halls of learning. Thank you for revealing to me the pattern, the trauma, and the wound that has created this lesson so that I can heal it once and for all. Wow. Okay. Interesting. The halls of learning. Gosh, that is really, um, really beautiful and really powerful. Pile number one and leading others through their journey um, in the halls of learning is something I feel you guys and I feel some of you here with this cleanse and death that you have actually led souls um, in between your lifetimes on earth. You've spent a lot of time in this halls of learning and when people are in between lifetimes you have helped others um, cleanse their prior lifetimes so that they may achieve inner alchemy, so that they may rise in their spiritual purpose and they may understand um, what their purpose and their calling is, okay? And if there's emotional issues and traumas that they need to um, move on from and cleanse from, I feel you are helpful in helping people understand what they need to let go of, Eight of Cups, what they need to heal from emotionally. And um, I feel some of you are in this halls of learning and meeting people there and helping them in between lifetimes. Okay. Um, helping them with their inner alchemy. All right. And it's like, you could be there in this library, like studying yourself and you run into somebody that starts talking to you and it's like, they really need your help. Okay or they really need you to help them move forward with something beautiful energy. Oh, wow. We have spirit guides. Yeah. And you know, um, helping people in between lifetimes, I feel like is kind of a preparation for becoming a spirit guide someday. It's kind of like training to be a spirit guide. I feel like, and this is card 13. Um, in this deck, which 13 in the tarot is associated with the death card. So again, we come back to this death energy here. 
Um, how would you like to be more spiritually connected? Do you have any unresolved issues from the past? What magical qualities do you wish to possess? Okay. And um, wow, and Stonehenge is in the background there. And um, maybe some of you really pick up on the energy when you're at mystical or magical places. You really, really pick up on the energy. I also feel like you're like you've read about spiritual or magical places and even just reading about that brings you um brings you the energy of those mystical places. I feel like your guides in this lifetime are like um what do you want to learn? How do you want to level up? And I also feel like they're bringing you like spiritual, mystical, magical energy of some of these very important um sites on earth that are incredibly electric like easter island like stonehenge like uh, mount shasta like all these um spiritual places like um i'm channeling right now so i can't think even though i've been there myself um in arizona sedona okay like um energy vortexes in sedona like i feel like your guides are helping you um to even if you haven't been able to travel a lot or you want to or you haven't been able to as much as you'd like to I feel like your guides are bringing you this kind of energy um because there's a lot of reading there's a lot of knowledge there's a lot available to you and I also feel like it comes at you in dream time um yeah, interesting energy, pile number one. We have here homeland and foundation. Wow. Okay, well, having, having a homeland and having a foundation is super important, but I also feel like exploring is something that your heart really desires, is being able to explore, okay? And, um, you know, learning about one's ancestry or homelands or learning about one's, um, like places that you'd want to go or learning about your lineage or this type of stuff is, is very important. Okay. Um, and Perhaps there's been some lineages or places that you've had to move on from. Okay. Wow. Pile number one. Interesting. Okay. And giving people a feeling of like, you know, even though you're far away from home, I'm here with you. I'm here for you. I'm here with you. Okay. Okay. Spirit guides, again, spirit guides coming up twice in your reading. It says it here and it says it here. Interesting. There's like a wilderness journey that I feel you guys really want to go on. And maybe it's something you have to do by yourself or it's something you need to step up and take the lead on. Um, but having a sense of security, a foundation, some place to return to is important. Okay, and a lot of souls, when they die, they're very like discombobulated, pile number one, and they don't know where they are or what's going on. And I feel like you are a guide in between lifetimes. This is what you do. Now, not, I don't feel like it's like a spirit guide in the sense of like how we think of spirit guides. I think. I think you're kind of in training to be a spirit guide, pile number one. And I think it's something you've been wanting to do for a long time. But I also feel like your souls wanted to do for a long time, but you always kind of come back to the earth plane because there is something nostalgic or something you're wanting to visit or see again. 
or learn more, you know? But I feel like a lot of you here could be in training to be a spirit guide one day. Like the traditional, like you've been assigned a human, you are their spirit guide, you know, type of thing. Um, but I feel like, you know, what you've been doing is um, when people are in between lifetimes, you've been helping them cleanse and die and be reborn into new lifetimes, okay? And I feel like a lot of you guys are, um, you know, the work that you're doing is, is intensely, it's intensely fun with the three of wands and it's like intensely spiritual and it puts you really, really in touch. Do you see how the hand is touching the light here? It puts you really, really in touch with source, but it's also like very intense. And so there is times where you need to kind of like break away and be on your own or like be away from, um, be away from things and kind of like be, on, be by yourself at times too. Okay. And, um, yeah, pile number one, I like your reading. That's very, very specific. Okay, and let's go ahead and get a message about your spiritual gifts. All right, what would spirit like to share with pile number one regarding their spiritual gifts? Oh, the high priestess, of course. <laughs> there you, of course, you know, the ability to have your feet in both worlds, in the highest of the high and the lowest of the low, right? Uh, of course, and look at that third eye. Ooh, look at that third eye. And... Um, Yeah, and it's almost like getting to a very blank state mentally where there's nothing else and so that you can interpret the signs and things like that. That is highly important. I also feel like she has the evil eye like right over her third eye here. And um, maybe some people have been jealous of certain things you can do or spiritually intimidated by you in some way pile number one I mean I feel um and I feel like sometimes the energy is like whoa you know like stuff you're doing is like really um bright and intense I'm also seeing like a bloodshot eye or eyes that are kind of like bloodshot or red and perhaps that is um you know, when you're getting really like, like a lot of intuitive stuff going on, maybe sometimes it actually affects your like eye eyes, like your actual eyes. Um, but let's go ahead and see here. Let's go ahead and see. For pile number one, give me a message about their spiritual gifts, please. I mean, you already, like I said, you came through as the high priestess. So you're already coming through as, you know, like, I, I do feel some of you here are training to become spirit guides someday, like full-fledged spirit guides, okay? And maybe that would be like the height and the pinnacle, because we've got the midheaven there, the height and the pinnacle of your, like of your soul journey, you know, we've got the two of pentacles here. Okay. But keeping the high, the highs and the lows balanced, very important when we're dealing with that energy, we have ace of swords. Ooh. Okay. Communication. We've got five of swords. Okay. And we have five of cups. Wow. Okay. I feel like People can get really stuck sometimes, pile number one, okay? Um, people can get really like mired down and not um, feeling like the world is against them, feeling like, um, you know, feeling very emotionally despondent, okay? And dealing, cutting through, cutting through, like negativity, cutting through bullshit, cutting through um, the things that are like weighing really heavily on other people is I feel like something where everyone else is kind of like lost in the situation and doesn't know what to do and is very like, 
um, you're taking the lead. I feel like you're opening up people's minds. I also feel too is something like that you guys do. It's like you open up people's minds to where they are getting stuck in trauma or where they are getting, like you show things to people and you open their mind to things that they never would have thought before. And, you know, lack of knowledge can really, um, like be a stumbling block in people's spiritual progress and lack of wanting to see the truth or lack of wanting to um, like face their emotions and things like that can be like really, I feel like looking at this five of cups sideways, actually looking at something in a new way and um, you know, and the cups, some cups are turned up, some cups are turned down. Some cups are turned up, some are turned down. Okay, it's like, let's empty out this cup, right? Cleanse, let's empty out and close this chapter. Let's um, let's take these three cups and bring them up towards the sun and bring them up towards the light. Let's empty out these other cups and let them go is kind of what I feel here. And some people, it's so mysterious to them why they're why why they feel the way they feel and I feel like what you guys are saying it's not always um important it's what's important is the emptying out and the opening up okay and sometimes we can get really stuck in our head and with something you know and I feel like you guys are really good at pointing out to people like, you're like, here, let me help. Here, let me, like, you know, I feel like it's kind of like the idea that everybody needs to hear. Or I'm getting, like, real parting of the Red Sea type of energy, pile number one. Maybe that's something you guys relate to is, like, Moses energy. I know, like, it's, like, religious in nature, but I just have to mention that. Or maybe you feel a special connection to that story. Um, but, yeah. Anyway, you know, a lot of people like they come, they come down really hard on themselves while giving everyone else a free pass and they live their life in misery and stuff like that. I feel like you guys are really good at pointing out where there's discrepancies, but reminding people to keep an open mind um, about where they're coming from and where other people are coming from. Okay. And perhaps maybe some of you are very skilled at handling conflict as well is something that I am seeing. Pile number one, really interesting energy. Um, you know, the Ace of Swords is certainly an energy of, of discernment. So I love that. And it was a pleasure reading for you today, pile number one. Um, gosh, if you make it to your goal of becoming a spirit guide someday, you know, send me a postcard. <laughs> Send me a postcard. I might be in Hades for fortune telling. No, I'm just kidding. Pile number one. Let's go ahead and move on to pile number two. Pile number two. Welcome to your reading. You chose the tiger angel. Gorgeous energy. Pile number two. And we are going to find out your spiritual gifts. We I haven't done a spiritual gifts reading for a while, so it's kind of fun. And um, it's Libra season. It's time to breathe magic and breathe beauty and art and magic into everything that we do. It's time to be softer with ourselves, softer with our animals, softer with, you know, just embracing softness and gentleness right with this tiger angel um but also like breathing our own like version of magic into things is something i'm picking up on right away a four of wands brightening up the room on the bottom of the deck are you pile number two you're brightening up the room i can already feel it all right let's go my loves and talk about your spiritual gifts oh wow we have dog and friend and that's Tiger Angel has a picture of a tiger on it. And she's comforting and holding the tiger. She's not afraid. Okay. She works with her 
animal instincts and she, um, you know, bring, brings life and brings magic into situations. Okay. Wow. Dog, friend, today I will love without condition. My energy and enthusiasm are in an inspiration. Yeah, lightning, lighting up a room, okay? My energy and enthusiasm are an inspiration. I choose to be happy. I am a protector and a friend. Oh, and look at the wolf too. Look at that wolf energy talking about like what we evolved from. You know, a lot of people think like, like, you know, the wolves are like our ancestors and the wolves are like the distant cousins of the dogs. And um, the dogs are like, they've got that animal instinct within them, but they've also, um, you know, they've evolved to like be even more like humans in a way. And this evolution is something, you know, going from something like really primitive and wild to something like um beautiful and inspiring and lovely like you know this this is interesting energy okay and maybe some of you here are very good with animals or uh, you're very good with animal communication or dogs or cats just have a way of like they love you and you love them and yeah awesome file number two awesome maybe some of you have like I always um, say my boyfriend has like a very amazing spiritual gift with animals. Like he's so good with them. He's so good at training them. And, and he just has this natural, like intuitive energy with animals and it's just cool, you know, and cer certain people have that. They really have that energy. Um, they can really connect with animals on a deep level. Okay, and we have here the seven of pentacles and awaiting results, okay? We've got the two of cups and coming together. Oh, the two of cups. It's so like your pet, your animal, like just looking at each other, the two of cups, like you're staring at your pet and you're like, I love you. And then they look back at you and tilt their head and they're like, I love you too. <laughs> so cute and a way of maybe making people feel loved and embraced and making people feel connected. This is something um, you guys are very good at, pile number two. We have energy, wow, interesting, okay? We have energy, my energy and enthusiasm. Yeah, like your energy um, helps calm and relax other people. Your energy, the way that when you walk into a room, um, maybe you guys are like, well, I'm not always calm and relaxing, Natalie. Like sometimes my energy is like doo -doo 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 everywhere, but it's fun. And that's like such a four of wands thing to be fun and energetic and happy and um, bringing the mood up for like other people or being like, let's go guys. Like being the one to kind of like, bring the energy up. All right. And we have here creativity. Wow. Oh my gosh. So much energy around your creativity. And, um, not everybody is like confident in their creativity. Not everybody is confident in like their ability to create things. And I feel like you guys have a lot of energy to kind of like create things. And I'm definitely getting, um, like Leo energy, sun energy, okay? I'm also getting cancer energy with this two of cups. Like, you know, um, like being a, a beautiful friend to others and being like, you know, helping people find hope, being enthusiastic, being able to celebrate others and not make it all about yourself, right? Being there with people in their positive moments and being enthusiastic and giving people like the thumbs up, you know, like you're okay, I'm okay, everything's okay, we're gonna have fun, we're gonna enjoy, okay? But a lot of spiritual energy and spiritual gifts around your creativity. Um, that's super cool, I like that. Not everybody has that. Ascension, your soul is evolving to higher states of consciousness. You are ready for this, okay? And I feel like you guys have been in growth mode with this Seven of Pentacles. Um, you have been in like, 
growth mode for a long time and that may have been frustrating at times, okay? Because sometimes it feels like growth can be kind of slow, all right? But through patience and through holding space for yourself and others, you find the energy of ascension, okay? And your soul is evolving to higher states of consciousness. You are ready for this, okay? Um, we have here, we have, oh, and it's nothing to be scared of either. For those of you that have been like a little bit scared of things or at times, or maybe um, not, maybe a little scared of interacting with the spirit world too much, maybe, okay. Um, like, you know, it's all good because I feel like you guys are like, um, because I, I, I feel like you guys are coming at it with your heart in the right place with this two of cups. Like your heart is in the right place. And um, I feel like, you know, your heart is a big, I don't know why I keep coming back to the heart, but I feel like that is where you are evolving and you are ascending and there are things to like put energy into and to be excited about creatively for sure. Okay. And you're like a whirlwind of energy when it comes to your creativity. And that is a gift from spirit for sure. Okay. We have 12th house and introspection. And this is card 50. Okay. We have 72 and 50. So um, those of you who are not anywhere near 50. Um, 50 may be a very introspective time for you, or if you are near 50, or if you've already passed 50, think about age 50, okay? And um, I feel something really like special is also going to happen to you guys when you reach age 72, like spiritually, I feel, okay? Um, and it may seem like it's a long time away. It's like 72, Natalie, it's so far away. Okay, awaiting results. It's like, yeah, I get it. I, I do, but, you, but you're also like, this is a journey and it's important to be patient with yourself, okay? And patient with others. I, I feel you guys could be showing others how to be creative or how to tap into their creativity as well. Um, and being a good like protector of like the younger generation or of animals is a huge, uh, huge thing. Like we need protector spirits on this planet. And sometimes with the 12th house, it can feel like what we're doing like doesn't matter or it's not important, but it is very important. And um, the 12th house is also like where our dreams come alive and it's where um, we can lose touch with reality really quickly if we're not careful, right? So the seven of pentacles helping to stay grounded, helping to stay focused on something. Okay, and the 12th house is also a house of meditation, yoga, um, you know, spiritual retreats, like, you know, helping other people who are having a hard time um, sitting still and tapping into their creativity or their spiritual gifts is something that I feel like you guys could be really good at. We have Stargate Heart. Oh my gosh, I kept referencing the heart. And here it is, okay, with the heart. And I am going to read this card for you guys, okay? And um, let me find it. Oh, I have so many books and I have so many things. Pile number two, you'd be like, Natalie, you've got so much stuff. <laughs> Uh, yeah, yeah. Okay, here's the book I'm looking for. Thank goodness. I really want to read this for you guys. Okay, Stargate Heart. Let's look at this because there is something about your heart that is very precious. Pile number two that has to do with your spiritual gifts. 
and let's see. Thank you for your patience. Again, we've got the seven of pentacles. It's like, thank you for your patience. <laughs> patience, you know what? Patience is something that is a really hard thing to develop spiritually. Like patience and being calm and kind with others, like that is a huge spiritual gift and we need it in this world so much. Okay, the heart chakra is our connection to love and generosity. Yeah, generosity for sure. When opened, it can take us on a powerful expedition to experience love. In Sanskrit, it is known as the Anahata, the Anahata Chakra, meaning unstruck or unbroken. Oh, I love that. I've, I haven't thought about that for a long time, pile number two. Uh, perhaps some of you do well, and we have the chakras here anyway on this 12th house card. Perhaps some of you here are fantastic meditators or you have a way of connecting people with what they truly want, what truly excites them and brings them love and joy in life. And, um, you know, the chakras I feel like are coming, especially the heart chakra is coming through for you guys really, really quickly. And um, a lot of musicians, I feel like connect with the heart chakra or a lot of like creative people connect with it big time. Um, Cause I feel like it's, you're pouring love into something. And um, yeah, and anahata in Sanskrit means the unstruck sound, which I think is so beautiful. The unstruck sound. All right, the peace and harmony that lives within everybody's hearts. And um, the unbroken, okay? the unbroken, revealing that even though we may feel our heart is broken, our true spiritual heart is always whole. Oh my gosh. Wow. And perhaps some of you, there is like an ascension path available um, through meditation, through the heart chakra, through the healing of the heart chakra. Okay. And the heart chakra governs all aspects of our heart, including relationships, what lights us up, and of course, our self-worth. This gateway transports us to the Emerald City, the temple of our heart, the sacred space within a place of wonder and love. Here are reminded of the sacredness we hold within, and we are encouraged to know that although it's like a hidden treasure, this beauty deserves to be seen and enjoyed by the outer world. The gateway image here is the path to the Emerald City, but it is the path less traveled. This can represent many years of denying self-worth and also moments during many lifetimes when we push love away. But now we are moving closer to the love we are. Oh my gosh, wow. Being patient and generous and kind with others as they're reaching there for their ascension path as well. And um, yeah, and also I feel some of you here because Sanskrit is mentioned, some of you may have a deep connection um, like in a past life to like a past life in India or a past life where you, you know, worked very closely with a guru or you were like really, really on a deep heart centered ascension path. And um you know, there's a lot of wisdom about patience and generosity and being kind to others. And also talking about, like we said, self-worth and healing the heart chakra and, um, you know, putting the energy of creativity into our lives, okay? Um, place your hands on your heart space and breathe deeply. Invite the sacred temple within to lower its drawbridge and open its gates so that you can experience love and harmony. Your heart space is a sacred space deep within you. For some time, you have protected it with psychic shields that have not only stopped you from hurt, but have also stopped you from love. This gateway appearing shows that you have finally dropped those shields and are ready to experience love. Universal wisdom wants you to know that this is your divine right. You are highly empathic and generous soul who has so much love to give and you are being called forth to reveal the deeper, more vulnerable aspects of your being. 
divine light being yeah deeper and vulnerable like to me that is like pets you know they're very vulnerable they have very open heart chakras um they are very like sensitive to our energy okay um and divine light beings are surrounding you holding you and encouraging you to relax okay yeah definitely like a lot of um you know, energy here with this two of cups about relaxing and feeling safe. All the restrictions and blockages of your heart space have been removed. The worst is behind you and the world needs you. Okay. And I feel some of you have like really been maybe in, in comfortable places before where your spiritual strength was being tested in very uncomfortable positions. And I even mean physically too. Um, you know, meditating, sitting and meditating for hours and hours and hours can be very uncomfortable in the body, you know, and I feel some of you did that over lifetimes, like, you know, you did meditation, you did, um, you know, spiritual retreats, you did, you did sit by the side of a guru and learn and absorb from them, you did, like, patiently and generously wait and give um, your energy to protecting people like children, animals, etc., that needed your love and protection. And um, these are very like important spiritual lessons, but they're not always comfortable and they're not always easy, you know. Um, and sometimes we can be very physically uncomfortable um, as well, like you know, like dealing with physical discomfort while trying to like hold space and have an open heart to things. So, I mean, it takes a lot of like, um, tenacity as a spirit to stand in that place. So I'm congratulating you on that pile. Number two, we have relationships here and, um, we see like divided energy in relationships New relationships are coming your way. Release present relationships and leave behind those who do not support you. Be clear about what you are committing to. Yeah, because I feel like when you guys commit to something, it's hardcore and it demands a lot from you spiritually, okay? And so um, this is card 39, and some of you, if you've already reached age 39, spirit wants to talk about what happened when you were 39 or where your head was at, or is pointing out to you, like on the cusp of your 40th birthday, there's going to be some big shifts in partnerships and relationships, okay? Um, and the way you see yourself in relationships. And I feel some of you are leaving a partner behind, okay? Okay. And it's hard for you to do that because you are very loyal and there, you know, there's such a strong soul tie there. And, but I feel some of you are leaving behind, um, somebody. Okay. And this is, you know, you're all in different places, but you're leaving, definitely leaving a person behind and it's painful but I feel like you've been patient, you've been loyal, you've been waiting. And um, and maybe there's been like, well, I'm not sure what to do. And the message is to follow your heart, right? And I feel like, you know, that is a gift that you've been given is your very soft, generous, kind heart. And the sense of I need to follow my heart. You know, I've been waiting in this place for a long time. And yeah, I've grown a lot spiritually okay and i've paused and i've introspected and i've looked at everything but it is time for me to finally like leave something behind which is you know that is a lot and there's a lot of oh wow yeah and you guys have um boundaries here all right and this is a knife that is used in um, magic Okay, and some of you here, I talked about, you know, your breath, because look at this, look at how she's breathing out in this circle of light is like swirling around her. So like breathing life into situations, bringing, breathing magic into situations, 
Um, you know, the breath is, is very important. Connecting with the breath, with the heart space, very important, okay? Especially like meditation wise, and maybe some of you are very aware of this and you know about this, very much so, okay? And, um, but there is like this knife that's used in magical rituals, uh, to cut, um, or to form boundaries around something. And we've got this boundaries card coming out with this relationship card. Um, so finding our self-worth and finding our spiritual strength through being able to cut away from situations, um, that are not honoring our growth in the present moment, okay? Maybe they fit our life in the past. Maybe we waited for a long time hoping someone would change. Maybe that, if, you know, we waited and looked at our own selves, right? And I feel like you guys are people, like you don't automatically jump to blaming the other person. You take the time to introspect within yourself um, when something goes wrong or when things are not working in a relationship. And it has brought you a lot of, you know, spiritual wisdom and it's brought you a lot of like, you know, introspection and looking at yourself, which is helping you grow a lot spiritually, pile number two, okay? But at the same time, there is a need to cut or to um, cut and clear like relationship situations from a magical perspective, even that are not working. And um, you know, being able to cut away from something in a kind and loving way, um, without, you know, denigrating or demeaning the other person. All right. Is I feel something, um, you guys are like, you know, I am detaching with love. I am, you know, it's not that I don't care. It's not that I don't love you. It's not that I'm, I wouldn't be here for you if you needed me, but it's time for me to go now. It's time for me to move forward now. And having the ability to do that is part of your ascension. And for some of you, letting go of a relationship pattern from many past lives and this lifetime, etc., is going to really cause you to have like an ascension moment for your soul that's going to connect you to your heart space and your creativity on an even deeper level. Okay. And, um, you're going to get to the point where you're be, you're going to be helping others to do this work too, you know, and this is not easy work with the seven of pentacles here. This is not easy work. And oftentimes it can be very slow and the results are definitely like not immediate, Okay, we have to be really patient with ourselves as we are, you know, going through times of confusion, going through times of not having the answers, right? And um, yeah, so this is interesting. And, you know, focusing on self-worth, focusing on, um, you know, growth and focusing on your heart chakra and perhaps some of you um, have an extremely special spiritual gift around your heart chakra and around your creativity as well. And sometimes it doesn't feel that way, you know, like our spiritual gifts are sometimes like, sometimes it's like, gee, why did I have to get this heart that like cares for everything and everyone? And gee, why am I always like waiting? And why is everything taking so long? You know, like this type of stuff. And you know, being patient, calm, generous, like with yourself is, is a way to show like, I value myself and I, I care about myself. Okay. And being a loyal companion, like the dog is a loyal companion throughout life. And I feel like being a loyal companion is something you guys take very seriously. Okay. Um, and with your heart chakra, as sensitive as it is. It's very sensitive, I feel like, your heart chakra. And maybe sometimes it's like, yeah, it's such a burden. It sucks sometimes, Natalie, and I get it. But it's also like one of, it's also a really important spiritual gift that you have too. So let's see here for my pile number twos. Let's see, let's get a message about their spiritual gift. Okay. 
And like I said, some of you here could be animal communicators, pet psychics, like, you know, working with animals, understanding like their communication, um, animals, babies, I feel like are like naturally drawn to you. And um, they love like your energy and your creativity. You're very creative when working uh, with animals or working with kids, I feel here too. All right. We've got the Ten of Pentacles, safety, security, stability. We've got temperance, okay? And we've got, oh, there's the Four of Wands again. That's so cool. And the Three of Wands is on the bottom of the deck. And, um, you know, I really feel like this is talking about the need um, to balance, like, one's feelings of, safety and security and feeling settled in life and feeling peaceful and at home and, and feeling like you've got structure and safety around you versus like the, you know, the freedom, the excitement and the freedom to explore new things. Okay. And, um, I feel like there is this kind of like tug of war happening a little bit. I don't mean to make it sound like whatever in your spirit right now, pile number two between, well, um, I'm going to stick with what I know and what feels very safe and secure versus, um, what could be more exciting, but is less, um, like less familiar maybe. Okay. And, um, so there is something going on with that, I feel, within you and having to make a decision about which way to go on something. Do I want to stick with the tried and true Ten of Pentacles or do I want to move towards something more like vibrant for myself, okay? And um, for some of you, this could be a shift in a living situation, but I also feel like this kind of being pulled back and forth between two things has been really hard and um you know there's like a need to test it out before picking one way or the other and um there is some compromises that I feel like have to kind of be made as well um but temperance is an energy of you know exploring what's there okay and um temperance is, is a very challenging card in the tarot it's not the easiest energy it's hard to be it's hard to be in two spaces like that at one time okay one foot in one foot out it's it's hard to um stand in the uncertainty and still be patient with yourself as you're learning and growing in in areas of your life okay um, but I also feel like you have the ability to kind of mix the tried and true and what you've always known and what makes you feel safe and secure with something lively and creative and fun. And it's about bringing those two sides together um, to the best of your ability. Okay, so pile number two, that is what I am getting for you, my friends. And um I hope that that reading resonated for you. Pile number two, uh, interesting energy. <laughs> Thank you so much, pile number two. Wishing you the best and take care. Let's move on to pile number three. Pile number three, welcome to your reading. You chose the Dark Harlequin, and today's reading is called Your Spiritual Gifts, okay? And we are about to dive deep into your spiritual gifts, which can change and grow and evolve over time. Or some can kind of fall back, and then others can kind of come forward, depending on where you are on your life path, you know? It's not that they aren't there anymore, it's just that they're not being emphasized as much, you know? So... Let's go ahead and where other ones are starting to be really emphasized. So let's see for pile number three, what are their spiritual gifts? 
okay. I'm seeing something about a needle or somebody getting their blood taken or blood drawn. Um, Knight of Cups, okay, interesting. I'm gonna leave that there. And um, let's see, oh, we've got the star card on the bottom of the deck. Lovely, okay. Totally nude, totally open, ready to party. Let's go ahead and file number three. Let's see. I feel like you guys are people that truly embrace your individuality and you are becoming more and more comfortable with yourself as time goes on. And maybe some of you are like totally comfortable with yourself at this point. And, um, yeah, so let's go ahead and see and helping others encourage them to be like, be themselves is something that is really like, don't be afraid to be yourself. Don't be afraid to be who you are. It's a huge thing for you guys. We have raccoon and inventor. Decide on what you really want. You have the ingenuity to claim it. Avoid being the trickster and practice integrity. You have many roles and can juggle them well. Wow, that's the raccoon and the inventor. You know, it's very Aquarius energy, particularly with the star card coming up. Also, the Knight of Cups is quite, um, quite like emotionally invested, you know? So let's go ahead and see what we've got going on here. And we've got card number 11, which is the justice card, and it says detach. Okay, and justice in the tarot represents Libra energy. And it says decide on what you really want. So maybe perhaps sometimes for you guys, it's been hard for you guys to decide what you really want and hard for you to detach, okay, from people that you care about or from people that you love. Um, but... It says avoid being the trickster and practice integrity. And I feel like you guys are really good at seeing through people's bullshit. Pile number three, or you're really good about, you know, when you, you're really, really good with your discernment, I feel, okay? And um, you see where things need to change. If you see this raccoon is looking at this butterfly, I feel like you guys see where things need to change, where other people maybe sometimes ignore um, the changes that need to be made in their life, okay? And um, I feel like you guys take on like the hard task. You're like, okay, how can I transform and change in this situation? How can I find my way to freedom? How can I find my way towards a better situation? Okay. And there's temptations, I feel like, along the way, for sure. Um, there's temptations which can take our focus off of things. Okay. But I feel like you guys are very, like, um, genius about things and seeing different ways to do things. Okay, and we've got here, we've got reach out, and this is the three of pentacles. So yeah, and look at the hands, they're making different levels. And, um, you know, I feel like you guys get like, bored when you don't have a challenge, spiritually. So it's like, you're always wanting to level up, but it's also challenging because it feels like the bar is always increasing, you know? So let's see we what we have here. We have intuition, absolutely, okay? Intuition is a huge spiritual gift for you guys. And we have rest, okay? And maybe some of you I talked about earlier in your reading about how like some spiritual gifts they're with us for a while and you know they change or they grow or we're not emphasizing them as much and we're kind of looking at other things okay i i feel like you guys have a lot of intuitive gifts but maybe it's not something you have it's like i'm tired i need a break and um you know, knowing when to 
knowing when to take a break. I also feel like you guys are kind of interested in other things right now. And I feel like maybe you are like spiritually bored or like spiritually not challenged right now. And you're trying to, I feel like you guys have definitely like honed a craft or you're very good at something, but I also feel like you're kind of like, eh, you know, like I want to try something different. Okay. Um, and let's see what else we have here. We have wisdom. See your adversaries as opportunities to expand your spiritual light. Okay. And, um, I feel like perhaps you guys, okay, one thing that I think you guys are very good at with the justice card here is speaking truth to a situation, okay? And some of you could have a friend or a relative or a lover or somebody that just isn't um, kind of where you are spiritually, okay? And I feel like some of you have been trying to help this person. Um, and, I, you know, I, I feel like you guys are, like, trying to detach from having, like, ego in spiritual situations and, you know, situations that are kind of, like, dying on the vine or very barren or not really, like, yielding any fruit. I feel like you guys are trying to kind of, like... You know, you want to help someone, but I also feel like you're like, eh, it's just not like, um, working. I've tried to kind of counsel someone or I've tried to help someone with something and it's just, they're not understanding it. They're not getting it. Okay. Um, and you know, there may be some people in your life who just are not like, uh, where, you are right now where when it comes to growth they're they're doing the best they can with the level that they're at but i feel like you're kind of like maybe sick of helping someone or you're sick of always um <laughs> it's interesting because i feel like you have so much wisdom to share and you want to help others with that wisdom but i also feel like you're changing in different ways within yourself right now. And so you're kind of not like, like you're kind of wanting to take a break. I feel like here, um, to kind of like change. And, and I feel this is how you are in ways sometimes pile number three, like you may, um, get you want to help people you want to be there for them you want to help them level up but sometimes we just can't sometimes it's like ugh, you know we have the eighth house in mystery okay yeah definitely like letting go and detaching from situations now the eighth house in in astrology has to do with you know letting go detaching releasing things. I always think of like if there's a piece of rotting fruit and it's just kind of like sitting there and we haven't thrown away yet. The eighth house is where we kind of make that decision to throw something away. Um, and sometimes our wisdom like lets us know when something isn't working. And actually um, the eighth house is also where like some of our habits from prior lifetimes show up to be dealt with in this lifetime. Um, so it can also be about um, learning to transcend or transform those things that we had a hard time dealing with in a past life or learning to transcend or let go of addictions, learning to transcend or let go of, um, you know, people, than things that are not good for us anymore, okay? And this is where I kind of feel like, you know, when people are going through, like, death and people are going through letting go, a spiritual death, dark night of the soul, 
um, they need somebody to like guide them and give them the wisdom that they need. Okay. And perhaps for some of you here, it's the wisdom of detaching, letting go, etc. We have inner earth, base chakra, strength, security, and laying foundations. Okay. And, um, let me, I'm going to read this inner earth card. Okay. And tapping into the mysteries of like unseen realms is also something that I feel like you guys are really good at doing. Um, but I feel like sometimes in life you've detached from that. You're like, eh, I'm going to focus on something else. Okay. Which is okay. We don't have to like stick with something forever. We can, um, let me look at this inner, inner, <laughs> I'm like, where's the I? Inner earth. Okay. Inner stability. The base chakra, also known as the root chakra, is founded at the base of the spine and is the energy center that governs our connection to the physical world and all of its lessons. This card transports us to the energetic gateway that connects us to this planet and everything that we've learned during our many lifetimes here, okay? We are being given a powerful opportunity to root down and claim our right to be on this planet, Okay, and root down and claim our right to be here. All right, and it talks about our many lifetimes here. So I feel like you guys have had many lifetimes on the earth plane. You've seen people come and go, come and go, come and go. And I feel like a lot of you with the eighth house here, you've dealt with a lot of, um, or you've seen a lot of death or you've had that. And I feel like there has been a huge, a very um, heavy, like karmic experience that some of you have gone through as well. Okay. And, um, you know, root down and claim our right to be on the planet, to claim the truth that ultimately we are safe. The image there is a gateway below a giant tree. Oh, wow. This realm is called the underworld. This is the spiritual realm. Ooh, the underworld, the dark Harlequin, of course. And she does look like, you know, the eighth house is the underworld for sure. It is the gate of Hades. The eighth house is the underworld. All right. This is the spiritual realm visited by shamans journeying to collect energies Ooh, pile number three. Do you have some of that shaman energy within you? Okay. Um, wow. Are you, have you seen shamans? Do you study shamanism? All right. This is the spiritual realm visited by shamans journeying to collect energies, meet guardian beings, and reclaim parts of their power or the power of others that have been left behind. Okay, and she's going back into the cave here to go back into um, what was missed before. And it's like, believe me, I don't feel like returning to this, but I know I need to. Or it can even be scary, you know, in some situations. And, um, you know, some of you here may be very gifted when it comes to soul ret retrieval, very gifted when it comes to shamanism, or you have like a lot of hidden gifts there that you haven't explored yet that um, are, you know, within you. Reclaim parts of their power or the power of others that have been left behind. Going back into the cave to kind of find um, what has been left behind and bringing that forth and seeing it in a new light, um, you know, is something, and maybe some of you really resonate with the energy of Persephone, um, you know, going down into the underworld and that Plutonic energy, um, you know, exploring the depths of things. Okay. And going back into the cave to 
bring forward um, what has died and then release it, right? And here she's releasing a bird. Um, and some of you may be really connected to like, to connected to birds or really connected to like nature, okay? Um, with this inner earth card here. But she's like releasing it back to its home, okay? And um, to find what, I feel like a spiritual gift you guys have is to find like what is taboo, what has been lost, what everyone else has rejected and doesn't want, to find it and bring it to the surface and um, like show it without shame, you know, and then release it back to the wild. I feel like that is kind of what you guys are really, um, what you guys are really gifted at spiritually, okay? And particularly with the eighth house of going to places that other people, journeying to places that may scare other people or that other people can't really um, go to, okay? But it may be tiring work at times and there may be times when it's like, I, I really just, I need a break, you know? And there may be times when it's, you need to go and reclaim the parts of yourself that you uh, left behind, you know, and there's something about stripping something naked or stripping something bare or stripping something raw to kind of get to kind of get down to the essentials of what it is, you know, that I feel you guys are very connected to. Also with the base chakra coming out here, I feel there in the eighth house, I feel like there is definitely you know, sexual energy that is part of your spiritual gift as well. Um, that is very like, maybe it's very, I'm getting the word elusive. That's very elusive to you at times. Um, but you can feel it, you know, and that's something that I'm getting here. Okay. Now let me see what else it says. It says, um, Know that if you are searching for parts of yourself, you have the opportunity to find them and build a stable foundation, okay? Um, where the right, you have the right to feel grounded, safe, and secure, okay? And if it feels like you're always losing your foundation or your foundation, you're always having to give stuff up or you're always having to let go of things all the time, I feel like you know, it is a lot. And, you know, as somebody, pile number three, as somebody who had to like, who lost all my possessions at one point in life, <laughs> I I hear you. I, I totally hear you on like losing everything and um, being something being stripped bare with like nothing left. Like it is a very, um, you know, it's, it's a lot. And that need to like continually be rebuilding with all these levels here to like continually be rebuilding. Um, and maybe sometimes it's really hard for you guys to like reach out for help and you feel maybe alone or stuck with things at times. And you know, the need to, like I feel some of you have had to leave your home a lot or like you've been displaced, or maybe there in other lifetimes, you had experiences of having to leave your home or being displaced from a home. And then you have to go back to basics and kind of like build it up from nothing, which is very traumatic. Um, but you learn not to get overly attached to things or possessions, or you learn to not get overly attached even to people sometimes you know, and um, especially like when they refuse to change or refuse to grow or these types of things, you know, and um, this is the spiritual realm. Okay, so we talked about that, knowing that if you're searching for parts of yourselves, you have the opportunity to find them and build a stable foundation. You have the right to feel grounded, safe, and secure, okay? You are becoming fully aware of what you need in order to feel safe and fulfilled on planet Earth. 
I know that it is part of the divine plan for you to be incarnated upon this planet now. And although at times it may have felt unstable or that you have lost your way, you have been building up momentum to be to where you are today. You are in a space where you can build powerful foundations, a space where you can lay out exactly what you need, who you need to be, and what you need to do to flourish and grow. You have the opportunity to reclaim parts of yourself that you've buried deep within and reclaim gifts you've abandoned. Oh, wow. Yeah. And, you know, gifts, spiritual gifts that you've abandoned um, because life is just too much and you have to focus on the practical side of things with the Three of Pentacles um, and stabilizing your money, your finances, your physical incarnation on earth, you know, maybe has caused you to let go um, and to let go of like some of those spiritual gifts. And it's now time to kind of like circle back and reclaim them. Um, or maybe like the pressures of the material world, like really, really, um, you know, demanded a lot from you. And it's like, you know, I want to get back to those spiritual roots and maybe some of you here, you're very intuitive, but you haven't been doing it as much or you haven't been working with it, working with those gifts a lot because you you're you haven't been sure of what you wanted and things have been really up and down and felt really up in the air and you've been going through like tremendous change and so it's been hard to kind of anchor into something spiritually you know um and maybe some of you here like you're good at helping others journey into the cave you know the cave is the metaphor for the inner self in the inner sanctum so it's like you know you're really good at helping others journey to the parts of themselves that they've forgotten that they've lost that they've rejected um but also i feel like it's maybe a lonely journey sometimes because maybe people are not always where <sighs> people don't always come to the place that you're at and i get that you know um if you're thinking of starting any projects or thinking about taking up something you've had on hold, now is the perfect time. The seeds you're planting are sending roots deep into Mother Earth. You are held, you are supported, okay? And finding that sense of being held and supportive has maybe been challenging. Yeah, we have prosperity here. And um, give and expect the universe to give back to you. Believe that you are prosperous already. Have gratitude for everything you have in life. Yeah, and um, I was talking about the material world and I was talking about um, having to let go of possessions, having to let go of things. The eighth house in astrology is also, um, you know, debt and like actual um, monetary debt. So that can be, you know, heavy sometimes. Um, I see card 35 here, okay? So maybe some of you need to think about what was going on when you were 35 or 35 is an important key year when it comes to your prosperity, okay? 31, okay, 31 and 35 are here. Maybe there's something to think about of that journey of time um, when it comes to prosperity, okay? Perhaps 31 was very hard for some of you and you had to give up a lot of things, you know, so there's a lot, like I feel you get to know and look, she's looking in the mirror at herself and I feel like you guys really get to know yourself on a deeper level. Um, and I feel like maybe sometimes it's like, I'm caught with this inventor card, like that maybe you're always reinventing yourself and it's like, I don't even know who I am anymore. I feel like I've just been chasing change my whole life and I've changed my appearance, I've changed this, I've changed that, and it feels like I don't really know who I am anymore. Now, I see a dragon in the background here that's wrapped around this yin and yang sign, and, um, you know, feeling like you can flourish, and dragons often guard wealth too, right? 
and feeling like you can flourish in life without people coming and trying to destroy what you've built. And some of you have dealt with a lot of enemies and adversaries as well. See your adversaries as opportunities to expand your spiritual light. And maybe some of you have felt like attacked at some points by people in your life and um, you know, like they are fucking with you even, pile number three, okay? And um, you know, just know that you are protected and there is dragon energy surrounding you. And um, dragon energy, especially in astrology, has to do with the North Node and the South Node. And maybe some of you, you have planets conjunction, the North Node or the South Node. Um, but Rahu K2, big influences on your life, past life karma, karma in this lifetime that has to be faced, the balance of energy for sure, okay? And dragons, um, some of you here could have like a spiritual connection to dragons or to the to dragon energy okay and um that is very close to you that is also when i think of dragons i always think of astrology too as well just because of the rahu k2 stuff north node south node so perhaps some of you um you know have some spiritual gifts with astrology or some spiritual gifts with the tarot here but the occult the eighth house is the occult and occult knowledge and occult wisdom, but perhaps it's been really hard to anchor in um, because you feel like you've been chasing things and it kind of, what you chase is like changing all the time and finding a sense of, you know, security and strength, um, you know, putting to bed some of the root chakra issues around money, prosperity. Those are maybe some things that are coming up here too. Um, we have scrying mirror and shadow. Wow, you guys. And there's a mirror here and a mirror here. So some of you, you need to work with mirror magic or perhaps some of you here are also very good at scrying. And if you've never tried scrying before as like a magical practice, um, it's you guys could be a natural at it. And sometimes you'll see me like scrying on tarot cards or you can do scrying in water. Um, there's like, you know, basically like seeing hidden things is what scrying is. And it's right on top of this eighth house energy, seeing what's hidden and being able to let it go, seeing what others cannot see. Um, is a spiritual gift that you guys have. And of the occult knowledge is, is secret knowledge that, and again, you can find it these days. It's not as secret as it used to be in the past, but not everybody can like find it, study it, pick it up and learn it and, and work with it. And has, you know, I feel some of you could have been diviners in a past life. You could have done a lot of scrying. Um, also mirror magic is a major uh, is a major kind of magic. Look it up online. And uh, mirror magic is a big thing uh, for affirmations, prosperity, uh, self-worth. Mirror magic is a huge thing. And some of you here may be very good with that. Okay. But I also feel like look, shadow is coming up here. So going into the cave and finding those shadow pieces and healing them, building on, like not being afraid of the shadow and not being obsessed with getting rid of it, but instead building on the knowledge of what you've learned about your shadow and what you've learned about the hidden aspects of humanity and yourself, right? And, uh, yeah, so, and also, you know, the eighth house is, is like scrappy fighter energy as well. It's that energy of, you know, I love the ingenuity, avoid being the trickster and practice integrity. You have the ingenuity to claim what you want, okay? And maybe some of you here, you can be very tricky at times. If you want it to be, you could trick people or fool people or lie to people, lie to people, 
if you wanted to because you have that ability within you like some of you could have some darker like spiritual gifts here but you're like yeah i'm not gonna you know i'm not gonna entertain that natalie i'm gonna try to keep it keep it real keep myself grounded um darker magic stuff like that i feel like you guys could be connected to pile number three okay um you go places other people are afraid to go and you look at things that other people are afraid to look at that. And because of that, you do experience like a lot of um, rapid progress, but I also feel there could be like disturbances at times. You know, you may feel like some things maybe feel like mentally disturbing, you know? Um, and when you get into that space, then we just want to focus on the base chakra Okay, focus on security, focus on safety, base chakra, okay? Um, let me go ahead and see. Let's go ahead and see for pile number three. What is a message here about their spiritual gifts? Let's get a message regarding their spiritual gifts. You see what's hidden in other people too, pile number three, okay? And... Um, that can trigger people. That can really trigger people, especially enemies. If you see what's hidden in them and you put it to words, you're, yeah, sometimes that's asking for trouble in life, you know? Um, we have the hermit. Yeah, I mentioned how sometimes it can maybe feel like it's more of a lonely journey at times. Pile number three, I hear you. And we have here the wheel of fortune. Ooh, you guys know Fate and free will are not always kind. You know, this is a very fierce wheel of fortune. Um, and life isn't always like easy, you know. We have the nine of swords, okay. Helping people when they're at their lowest point and when they don't know which way to go or which way to turn in life. I feel like you guys are there. Wow, the death card. Yeah, yes, anxiety. And a lot of people get a lot of, um, you know, the death card, the it house, the shadow, the scrying mirror. I mean, geez, pile number three. That's a lot of power, okay? And there's a lot of power in your spiritual gifts, okay? Um, a lot of power in, in working with fate and free will. And um, a big theme coming up here is power, okay? And maybe sometimes it's a lot for you to deal with too, or you get worried about, you know, am I doing the right thing? Okay. Am I hurting people? And would I hurt people? Um, you know, the thing is, is I feel is there's some pretty heavy spiritual forces at play in your guys's life. Like there's heavy energies that sometimes I feel like claw at you in ways, pile number three. Okay. And that could be, um, like, I don't know what direction to go. I'm trying to listen to spirit. I'm not sure. And maybe that's why it's like I have to give my intuition a rest, okay, with this Nine of Swords here. It's like I have to give my intuition a rest because so much comes at me at once. Wheel of Fortune. Um, you know, because so much comes at me at once and it's really intense I just need to sometimes turn it off, you know, and it may feel like it's kind of out of control at times. And, um, you know, I do think that's why the base chakra is coming up as far as grounding your energy and the three of pentacles of taking things one step at a time. Um, because the energy that I'm getting is overwhelming. Okay. And outside forces are very overwhelming, I feel like, sometimes. And maybe sometimes it really does feel like people are totally fucking, like, with your life. You know, like, there are people that are trying to close doors to opportunities, the death card. There are people that are trying to tempt you off your path. There are um, 
I'm seeing particularly a man here who's very toxic and bad um, that, you know, could be a, an ex-lover, a friend, a family member, a father, somebody like that. Um, the, the forces of fate are extremely overwhelming. And if we're not like mentally balanced, it can be like way too much. And the amount of spiritual power that is swirling around you guys is quite um, a lot and overwhelming at times. And, um, you know, so I feel like, you know, some of you here could be saying, I don't know if I want to do intuition or intuitive work anymore. I don't know if I really want to open my energy to it. It's, it's very overwhelming. It's a lot. Okay. I'm not sure if I'm in a space mentally. Um, and maybe you do need to take care of yourself mentally right now before you open yourself up, um, to these energies. I feel like, you know, you guys could have mediumship abilities with the death card here, really connecting with the other side, um, spirits visiting you at night, spirits showing up uninvited, you know, we really have to, um, get some control over that. If, if you're having some of those things happen, like, you know, getting control over your space, getting control over your environment, like my living environment, my space, um, you know, feeling safe where you are. Okay. Um, getting your footing and your grounding in something. So then you can go from there and, and go step by step instead of just all this overwhelming energy, like rushing in, um, is something that I feel, you know, um, and I feel you guys after a while, it's like you guys become very skilled at guiding people through some of the most overwhelming moments of their life when they literally are lost and have nowhere to turn and they don't know what's coming next in their life. I feel like you guys bring hope and I'm really drawn to the um, priest here in the corner. Not to say you guys are priests, but that priestesses, priests, shamans, okay? People who comfort others during times of grief and during times of great change, okay? And you know that you know the responsibility involved in, in fortune telling. I don't know, I'm going to call it that. But, you know, astrology, tarot, you know the responsibility there because it can literally change people's fates or it can literally like, you know, and, and sometimes like when we listen to a lot of readings or we do a lot of astrology, it can become very overwhelming and we need to take a step back from it. Um, because we're like constantly feeling like overwhelmed by the energies, you know, it's, it's that kind of stuff that, um, I feel like you guys have a lot of powerful spiritual gifts, pile number three, but it's all about rooting yourself and grounding yourself and feeling safe to do the work that you're wanting to do and then feeling like you can take it one step at a time, okay? So pile number three, that is what I am getting for you, my loves. I wish you all the very best and take care.